Hi, I'm Craig Price with Surface Water Solutions. Welcome to our video series on using RAS Mapper as a GIS tool. Now Christmas is already over here in Australia. It's Boxing Day, but I think it still is Christmas somewhere on the planet, so I'm going to use that as an excuse to keep my glitter beard going and to wear my Wild Santa shirt. So this video covers world files. It's a file format I've been using for about, uh, I'd say 25 years now. I used to scan in historical survey maps in hard copy and then try to use world files to geo-reference uh, river maps in particular and try to trace the thalweg over time and see if we can make animations like you see in the processes here. Nowadays we can do a much better job of this because satellite imagery comes in already geo-referenced. But we do still run into projection issues which is why we need to go in and manually modify the text file that is a world file. Now Wikipedia has a pretty good definition of this. You can see all of the parameters of a world file written out here. Uh, there are six lines of code and it's just plain ASCII text. What you've got here is two lines of text that refer to the scale, two of them that refer to the rotation, and two that refer to the coordinates of the upper left pixel. I've put these into a spreadsheet that we'll refer to throughout this video. You can make your own, or if you want to email me, I'll send you a copy of this spreadsheet. So let's get started, and I'll show you some of the issues that we might typically have in RASMapper. Now, one of the things I always suggest that you do when you first pull in your terrain file is to go right in and grab your web imagery to see if you're georeferenced properly. So in this case, if I pull in my satellite image, you can see that there's a shift right here and the river this is not a migration of the river this is just a projection issue so the river should be over here uh, but when you pull in your satellite imagery you can see that the development ends up right in the river and the river is actually uh, shifted over by a bit if that happens to you especially if you're a european user you may want to go to tools options and try this alternate HECRAS raster warping method. Sometimes that will do the trick and that will line your web imagery up with your survey data or whatever other um, shape files you might be pulling into RAS Mapper. If that doesn't do the trick for you, I'll show you a couple of hacks here on how you can manually adjust the world file uh, to shift your imagery. Now, if I take my Google satellite image here that's uh, shifted, if I've measured two common points um, where I see it showing up and where I think it should be showing up, I can uh, generate the shift amount, uh, the distance that we need to shift this uh, image by. I'll use the measure command up here, and in this case, I know the river needs to go from there to about right there, um, which is, I'll call this 250. So if I need to shift my entire uh, image by 250 meters, I'll need to apply that shift to the world file. In order to do that, I'm going to need to get a static image of the satellite. Now in order to do this we're going to save some views and save some static imagery. If you go to surfacewater.biz slash views you can see a walkthrough of this whole process and why we do this, um, how we can go in and uh, take your satellite imagery and uh, go to specific zoom levels export it as a static image and then that way when you're sitting in a client's office trying to present your project and you lose your Wi-Fi connection um, your image still looks the same you don't have to rely on your internet connection and uh, that's something that I like to do especially for figures so they come out consistent at whatever zoom level it is that you'd like to save your image at so in this case I'm going to export the satellite image as a JPEG. If you use TIFF, that uh, means the georeferencing information, the world file, will be embedded and encoded into the metadata and into the header information. It's encoded though, so you're not going to be able to just open it up as text. So I'm going to suggest you use the JPEG format here. And in this one, we'll go ahead and put it into our aerial image uh, directory. And this will be the Google satellite. Uh, I'm going to call it wrong. So we know this one was wrong. And what you'll notice is that has now created a JGW file. Again, the formula for world files is to take out the middle letter of your file extension and then add a W at the end. JPEG goes to JGW, 
BMP goes to BPW, TIF goes to TFW, PING goes to PGW. Uh, uh, that's the formula. So you will have this JGW file, which now has georeferencing information encoded in it. So I'm going to copy this right here and paste it into my world file calculator spreadsheet, which really is not all that complex. And I'm just going to paste it right here. And that gives me my original world file. I'm going to shift this one by 250 meters. This gives me a new world file, which I'm going to paste right back over the top of this one. And once I save that, I need to go into my map here. I'm going to remove this one and I'm going to pull in the one that was shifted. And let's just see if my wrong one now ends up as a right one. Make sure you drag down here to others so that you can see uh, what you're going to get. And now when I pull this one in, this was wrong. I should relabel this as right. You can see that it lines up. Now remember this is a static image, so it is not pyramided, meaning when I go and zoom into this thing, it will be heavily pixelated. It's not going to update with the highest resolution like a world imagery file would. So I'm gonna go back to my saved view here, and I'm gonna readjust this one so that you can see images everywhere. You see that I just shifted it over. I'm going to use saved views here and I'll give this one a new view extent. Okay, so this is now my shifted uh, image. Now to do this more accurately, you would probably want to zoom in on an actual roadway intersection, a building corner, or something that will give you both an X and a Y shift. I just uh, estimated it in at the uh, 250 meters. You may end up with a very specific number for your own shift. Now let's go back to the old school method where, uh, like I was talking about, where we used to have um, hard copy survey data that we would scan in. Um, what if all you had was a hard copy flood delineation map and you wanted to see how that lines up with your current uh, RAS mapper project? In this case, let's say I scanned in an image here that I've got in a PDF file now. So let's call this a uh, hard copy that I've scanned in, which is a flood delineation. This could be any map at all, any survey information that you've just got as a hard copy or as a digital image or a PDF file or anything at all. Hopefully it's got a scale bar on it. That will save you a bit of time. If it doesn't, um, you'll have to find something on there to scale. In this case, I'm going to take my PDF file and just save it as a JPEG image. You can change the settings on this one um, so that uh, you could get your resolution adjusted to whatever you'd like. This is the resolution at which it will come in in RASMapper. So I'm going to save this one and give it an example file here, um, the file name. It's going to be a JPEG and I'm going to call this shift. So now I've got a JPEG image, but it does not have a world file associated with it yet. I'm going to need to add that world file information. So now I've got this file called world file example shift. This is uh, the scanned uh, image. This could be a JPEG. It could be a PDF that you've converted to JPEG. It's just some sort of hard copy information that you have that is not geo-referenced. It's just pixels uh, with uh, some sort of zero, zero coordinate down here. Um, you need to give it geo-referencing information now. So what you'll need to do is give it the same exact file name um, as the file itself. So I've got this one, I've just copied the JGW file that we already made, and I'm going to call this exactly the same thing um, as our JPEG image. So world file example shift, if you get one character wrong, it will not work. So it needs to be called the same thing with the extension being JGW instead of JPEG. Now this georeferencing information doesn't actually correspond to the georeferencing information in the JPEG image itself. But let's just have a look and pull it in and see where we ended up on the planet. So I'm going to add this one as a map data layer, as an existing layer. Remember, you have to drag down to see this one. Um, this is now my world file example shift.jpg, which has georeferencing information associated with it. When I pull this in, it's probably not going to come in in the right place. The scale may be wrong and the coordinates may be wrong as well. So let's see where we ended up. You see this one here? This is now where my raster image ended up being. So this is not in the right place and it's not at the right scale. Uh, luckily, I've got some scaling information right here. It's right off the scale bar on my image. If I didn't have this, I would need to find two buildings, two roads, something in there that I can measure to get a distance. 
So I'm going to use my little measure tool right here, get as close as I can, and figure out how far apart this uh, scale bar is. It should be 500 meters, but when I measure it, I get 1,493 meters. So again, I'm going to pull up my handy little uh, <laughs> world file calculator here, and I'm going to put in what it uh, was and what it should be so that I can check the change here. I'll need to take out the adjustment that I previously made and then put in my measured and adjusted coordinates. I'm just going to use 1500 uh, rounded off. And like I see here, this shows me that my pixels need to be one third of what they were before. Oh, and I pasted this in the wrong place. This needs to be the uh, y, X scale and Y scale. Keep your rotation at zero. My suggestion, if you have any rotation at all to deal with, I would actually do that in Photoshop. Um, in Word, you can use the Z or Z rotation to specify an exact rotation. Uh, I would get north straight up in your scanned image before you even start into this. If you have to mess around with these uh, rotation factors, um, things get shifted as you zoom in and out. I wouldn't even mess with the rotation factor. So now these new world files right here, I always suggest doing the scales first and then shifting the coordinates. So let's see where this takes us. If I paste this in as my new world file, um, we'll put that into the JGW file that we already pulled up. So here's my world file example shift. I'm just gonna paste this new set of uh, values right over the top of it and let's see where we end up. When I save this and now I pull this file back out again. I have to remove it and add it back in again. Then we'll see where we end up. So I'll remove the layer and pull it back in again every time you've got to drag down and grab JPEG as a file format. And when I pull this in now, let's check it and see if we ended up with the right scale at least. So when I measure this one now, my 500 meters ends up going from there to there and I am now at 499.69. To me, that's close enough. So now let's shift it to where we need to be. Um, I, in order to do this, you might want to take the transparency and move that around so that you can find two common points and we'll figure out our X and Y shift between those two common points. Now we could get very specific with this. I'm going to rough it in and just have a look at this confluence area right here, that little tributary. And I'm gonna go from there over to there. I know this is where it needs to be. And instead of just looking at a line length and a slope, I'm gonna copy the coordinates to the clipboard. That's the coordinates of these two X, Y points there and there. And so when I copy those to the clipboard, that's going to give me a difference that I'm gonna put into this spreadsheet. So I'm going to paste these coordinates into my spreadsheet here. For some reason, it always repeats the last one, so we'll get rid of that. And what I'm going to do is just find the difference between these two. This is the shift in the X. This is the shift in the Y. So again, it needs to move over positively in the X and uh, negatively in the Y. That's down. And so when I pull these values in here, that one right there and this one right here, um, I can see my new world file coordinates right there. So I'm gonna paste those right back over the top of my world file example shift.jgw file. So I'll open that one up and paste right over the top of it with my new coordinates and let's see how we did when we remove this file and pull it back in. So I'll remove the layer, go back in, add my existing layer, drag down so that I can see it, world file shift, and there we are. So basically what I've got now is a scanned image that has now come in right over the top of my other image. And just to make sure they line up, let's pull this back. Um, you can see now that my world file that has been shifted, uh, this could have been some any sort of hard copy of any map that we had, any PDF file, you pull that in and now it all lines up but that's, uh, that's how you do it. That gives you some tricks in your toolbox uh, to use RASMapper as a GIS tool. You could pull this into um, AutoCAD or GIS, QGIS, ARC, um, any software that recognizes world files, um, you'll be able to pull this image in and have it come in in the same place, in the correct place on the planet, so long as you're using the correct projection. And I hope you find this uh, helpful. Merry Christmas from Glitterbeard. And uh, I'll be posting more videos over the holidays as I've got a little bit of time to catch up on things. Um, look forward to interacting with you online. I hope you're enjoying using Hecraz. I'm wishing you a very happy 2019. Signing off.